Good day, everyone. Dantas here. Pocket Pair has done it again, and this is one of the more exciting updates that we've seen thus far. There's a ton to talk about, so let's go ahead and dig right in, and hopefully you guys enjoy. Just a quick disclaimer, this is going to be in reference to both Steam and Xbox update version 0.2.0.6. Looks like the Steam version has already been released, and the Xbox version, quote unquote, will be released when ready. I'm assuming that's going to be later this week. In terms of new content, the first raid boss has been implemented, Bella Noir. Are super excited to jump in and see if I can take that boss down. It looks like the way you do it is by summoning the raid boss pal by using slabs at the new summoning altar. Raid boss pals summoned by slabs are very powerful and cannot actually be captured, so it says you need to work alongside your base pals to take on these powerful enemies. Once you defeat them, they will drop something called a pal egg. It doesn't actually define what that is, but I'm assuming that it's just going to be an egg of the boss you just killed, so when you hatch it, you can have a baby version of it. And the the notes also say that the quote unquote extreme version of the raid boss is incredibly powerful and difficult to defeat. It doesn't actually detail what the varying difficulties give you, but hopefully you get more eggs or something like that. In terms of new items, they added a training manual, which allows you to give experience points to pals directly, so kind of like rare candies. They added an ancient technical manual, which drops inside of dungeon chests randomly that gives you ancient technology points. They also added something called recovery meds, which slowly recover your HP over time. That's a welcome fix because managing food is not always the easiest thing. And they give you a literal flying Nimbus. They introduced an item called the Homeward Thundercloud, which is just an awesome name for it. And it says when this item is used, it will instantly move you to your nearest base. New items called ability glasses have also been added. And when they're equipped, you can actually see PAL stats. So kind of like a power scanner. I'm, I'm getting some Dragon Ball Z theme vibes here right now. And they added new stat boosting items called the Power Fruit, the Life Fruit, and the Stout Fruit. These items will boost PAL stats when used. They added a new passive ability called Mercy Hit, and it says PALs with this passive cannot reduce an enemy's HP below one when attacking. This is amazing because I can't tell you how many times I've super beefed up my pals and I've seen one that I want to catch and they just one hit it. So this is effectively a false swipe in that other game we like to play. So it's going to make catching pals a ton easier so you're not just overkilling them. In that same vein of the mercy hit passive, they also added an item called the ring of mercy, which when worn makes it to where you cannot reduce an enemy's HP below one when attacking. So it's a false swipe for the actual player itself, you guys. New armor, the multi-climate undershirt has been added. Protect yourself against both the heat and the cold with just one slot. Like, literally thank you guys so much. They added something new that you can build called the electric egg incubator, and it says this incubator consumes electricity to automatically adjust the temperature to the optimum temperature for each egg. They added also another building called the ore mining site, and it says this mining site allows you to produce ores from the comfort of your own base. I actually love this because that enables you to basically be able to build your base wherever you want. You don't need to worry about having certain ore nodes there as a resource so that your pals are farming it. You can build your base literally wherever you want and you can have all the resources right at your disposal. I, I think this is a phenomenal change and that alone is going to do so much for people that like to play on multiplayer servers so this way you're not all fighting for that one overpowered spot that I showed you in one of my earlier videos. With respect to pals, they said that Kelpsy can now produce pal fluids at the ranch. That's pretty cool. Dumb Mud can now produce high quality pal oil at the ranch as well. And it says that you can now reduce the weight of metal ore while riding Serpent Terra. I don't know what that means, but I'm assuming you can just throw out Serpent Terra and ride it and it will just slide along the surface and make it to where you're not over encumbered. They also said that they increase the amount of ore that's dropped while you're riding Astagon. And it says you can now raise a pal's rank to the maximum with a single synthesis using the PAL Essence Condenser. This way you're not clicking through every single one of them, which takes a ton of time and basically guarantees that you're going to get Carpal Tunnel. It also says that negative PAL stats will now be resolved after spending some time in the PAL box. So if your PALs are sick or wounded or have broken bones, you can just put them in the PAL box and they will slowly recover over time. I'm starting to get Pokemon Center vibes here. They also made a ton of changes with respect to the UI. So it says while aiming a sphere, it will now display 
how many of the target pal has already been captured. You can also now check the cooldowns on partner skills for all your pals on the main screen so you can more effectively and easily manage what your pals are doing. It says equipment and item stats are now visible on the technology screen even if you haven't unlocked them first. With respect to the tutorial, it's now going to be called The Journey and you can actually show and hide that in the game options. So if you guys don't know, whenever you start a new account or a new file, in the upper right hand corner there's kind of like an objective screen and it's not always the first thing you want to do so while you're playing a new game and starting a new character you got this big annoying part of the UI just hanging out in the screen so looks like we can now hide that they said that when you're in raid boss battles the damage numbers can actually tend to overlap a ton and so they actually added the ability for us to change the size of the text for the damage numbers in the game options so that's pretty cool as well when it comes to the player items dropped by players after death on a dedicated server can now be picked up by anyone after 24 hours of real time have elapsed. So this way, if you die on a dedicated server, you won't immediately lose all your stuff. You'll have at least 24 hours to go back and get it. And they also added a new emote called sleeping, which as you can imagine, just has your character sleeping. The next round are actually base related and you guys can get excited about this. It says you can now allow or disallow certain work for base pals at the monitoring stand. So this way, if you don't want your pen king transporting or doing something completely unrelated other than watering, you can just disable what it's doing. So that virtually should guarantee that every pal that you have that has different work suitabilities is only doing what you want it to do. S tier fix. Thank you guys. They said that you can also add chest filters so you can select which item types to allow or disallow inside of chests. So if you guys have pals on the ranch or if you have pals that are mining and transporting, you can actually designate which chests those items are going to be deposited into so you don't go to a certain chest and have like salads and tomatoes and stone ore and all this other stuff just completely mixed up and disorganized so now they've had the ability for us to filter and organize what pals put what items in what chests it says that crafted items are now actually transported from those crafting facilities if you select allow transport when you're crafting it once it's done being crafted your pals will actually go up and grab it and take it to the chest which is pretty cool and it looks like you can now edit your character's appearance at any time using the antique dresser this is wonderful so you guys can basically mix and match and do whatever you want more customization is always a welcome fix and it says building and building piece placement rules have been relaxed you can now connect stairs facing upwards roofing pieces can now directly connect to foundations and triangular walls can now be connected to stairs it also says you can now force a pal to work and cancel their break by picking them up and throwing them towards a facility Facility. It also says here that fixed assignments will remain fixed even after bad events occur. So if you guys don't know, if you assign a pal to a certain facility and let's say you get raided, sometimes they would be interrupted and they would go and resume doing something completely different from what you wanted them to do. And so with this fix, it looks like once you assign a pal to a facility, that's what it's going to be doing no matter what happens. Balance adjustments. Minimum heat and cold resistance have been added to various armors. You will no longer need to take off your heat resistant armor when it's cold at night in the starting areas. That's really good. They reduced the button press time in the egg incubator. Looks like a visual change. They said they changed the pattern for Jormantide Ignis to something more unique. They added legendary blueprints for some firearms, so they dropped from specific enemies. So it looks like we have new legendary items to collect. They corrected the selling price of diamonds. Not sure what that's referencing. In single player, it is no longer possible to select the initial spawn point for multiplayer. They blocked the back of the starting area with rocks to prevent players from getting lost or stuck. They also said that they balanced the increased attack power multiplier of partner skills that increase the player's attack power while riding the back. They adjusted that from a 2.0 multiplier to a 1.2 multiplier, so you're not doing a ton more damage on your pal's back anymore. This is actually pretty cool. It says that eggs now have a small chance to produce alpha pals. That's interesting. Flying and floating pals are now immune to fall damage, and it says that shop prices have been adjusted. We're rounding up on the end here. We've got bug fixes and other things here. With respect to bugs, they fixed a bug where treasure chests would become empty when dying in a dungeon. There was also a bug, which I'm not going to detail in this video, but you could be on, say, a shadow beak and have a bunch of hookertees in your party, which increase your dark damage multiplier. And there was a bug where that multiplier was being multiplied over and over and over. So you basically could get up to like a million percent of attack increase. And 
it looks like they finally fixed that, which is great because that actually was game breaking. They fixed an issue where players were not receiving loot when capturing pals while mounted. They say here that they also adjusted the HP of the legendary pals, and they fixed an issue where there was a big difference between the HP and the pal that was captured, the legendary pal that was captured, and let's say a legendary pal that was bred. It looks like there was a huge discrepancy. The captured pal had a much higher HP and the hatch pal had a much lower HP. They fixed an issue where pals would eat while riding. And the last bug fix they fixed was they fixed an issue where spheres thrown close to wild pals would not actually hit and would be lost. So it looks like they're a little bit more lenient now with respect to how close you can throw a pal sphere. I think this is a welcome fix. And from a visual perspective, they said that they improved various pal models and textures. Excited to see what that looks like. And they also added and adjusted some sound effects. The next list here are going to be for your elite gamers and, and data driven people who care about like APIs and servers and stuff, but they fixed an issue where sorting did not work in the server list. They improved the server list to allow page transitions. Dedicated servers now support various log outputs, and it says they implemented REST API. In the area of cheat prevention, looks like they fixed a vulnerability that allowed Steam account spoofing. That's pretty scary. And they also fixed seven other critical vulnerabilities, and I'm happy they didn't detail those. And lastly, it looks like they added a new song to the soundtrack. So for those of you that did purchase the soundtrack, they said you can just refresh and it should be available to download in a couple days. At the end of this post, Pocket Para said that we are planning a larger, more content packed update for summer 2024. Enjoy never before seen scenery and thrilling adventures on a new island home to many new pals. That is exciting. It also says, in addition, we also plan to add a large amount of new content, including new buildings, new weapons, and new tower bosses. Thank you for your continued support of Pal World. That's going to be it for the update, guys. Let me know in the comments, what do you think about this? I mean, personally, I think that there are a ton of quality of life improvements here. And the fact that they said that there is going to be never before seen scenery with thrilling adventures, a new island, which is home to quote unquote many any new pals. I mean, that alone actually has me excited. And I will be returning after a short hiatus because frankly, there was just nothing to do in this game. And it's funny because I was actually today thinking of making a video called Is Pal World Dead? And it kind of feels like they read my mind and said, hey guys, we got to push this patch out now before Dantas produces a hit piece and publishes it to YouTube. So I'm curious to know, which of these many fixes are you guys most excited about and which of these changes that they've already implemented are going to bring the biggest quality of life from improvement to you guys in your personal playthrough of this game so far. Let me know in the comments what you guys think, and I'll talk to you soon.